new 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 okay first up we got a book got a book ada twist scientist um this is a fun book uh that it's kind of like a large picture book with beautiful drawings it's for kids, but you know, maybe you have kids so you can read it. Yeah, Danny, any products reviewed? He's like, this is a good book. We should yeah, talk it. Yeah, it's a nice book. It's got uh, rhymes, and it's about um, a young girl named Ada, and um, oh, sorry, there's a sticker. And she's um, really creative, and she likes to build stuff, and uh, she always asks questions about why things are, and she likes to make uh, you know Mentos uh, and Coke exploding things and she likes to play with radios and and uh, telephones and clocks and she's just creative and constructive so I think it's just these beautiful beautiful drawings and a wonderful story about Ada Twist. How does the story end? You're gonna have to pick up the book to find it's a out. It's twist ending. It's by yeah. Andrea uh, Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts, Ada Twist scientist. So we love carrying books that we think are inspiring to young makers. Uh, yep. So if you have a young maker you know maybe they would appreciate this book. Okay next up. It's a black rectangle. <laughs> um, this is a, a, a item that was in um, Ada Box 7. It's a um, really nice metal security, uh, a camera uh, security slide. So I'm gonna show it just sort of um, like this. So it's got this really strong glue on the back and if I removed this um, blue plastic, then it would, I would be able to stick it on the back. And then it's got a little groove that w when you just slide your finger over it, it stays where it's at, but when you um, rub your finger, you can um, open it up or close it. And it's just the right size for a tablet, phone, or laptop, like built-in cameras. It's not gonna work with your gigantic Logitech camera that sits on top of your monitor. No, but the sneaky built-in ones, which you wanna cover, that's what this is yeah. for. And it's super skinny. So a lot of these camera covers that we uh, got samples of were like really thick plastic. This one is ultra thin. So even if you have like the fanciest new Apple MacBook or, or Dell or Yoga Book or whatever, it will close. You don't have to worry about that. Like um, it doesn't get in the way of the, the closing mechanisms because it's so skinny, but it's it's still quite easy to open and close thanks to this um, notch part. And now it's available in Adafruit Black. Okay. Next up we have... This back. Standoffs. This is the Circuit Playground Express bolt-on kit. So you get... Um, six M3 12 millimeter long uh, standoffs and you get uh, 12 um, M3 five millimeter screws. The screws of course go into the standoff and these provide both uh, mechanical and electrical connections. So um, we're using them primarily for things like the Cricut where you see there's six connections um, for ground, I squared C, audio out and one uh, data line and V out. So these six connections give you the mechanical connection as well as the electrical connection for the circuit playground to the Cricut board itself. So for um, boards like the Gemma, the Flora, the Circuit Playground Express, and um, even the Microbit, um, these are items that have these large holes in them. You can use a bolt-on kit to connect it to something else and also make it like nice and rigid. All right, next up, tools for lock sport. Lock sport tools, we have two of these, so maybe we'll, we'll show both of them and then I'll just demo both at yeah, once. Sure. So we have a really fancy kit. Um, this one has like hardened uh, steel, um, like a spring steel that feels really good and it has uh, riveted handles, comes with a little case. And you get 12 picks and I think three wrenches. And then the other kit is a more basic kit with stamped metal. Um, yeah, stamped metal and little rubber holders and it's um, a nine piece set. So I think it's yeah, nine picks and two inches. So the fancier one is fancier, but the basic one is pretty good. And the basic one is what we included in um, the Ada Box 9. So I can show this off. So if you're interested in lock sport, you're like, hey, I've learned about this thing where you basically, I like to describe it as doing a Rubik's Cube with your eyes closed. Um, you know, learning how to pick a lock is just a really fun skill that like, you'll, you'll learn to listen to your fingers. Um, and it takes a lot of uh, patience, so you'll, you'll definitely learn that. Um, we do recommend starting with a basic uh, lock, like this clear pad lock that we have, that again was also an Ada Box 7. It's a great practice lock. Um, 
you know, we, we particularly like these, uh, you know, simple picks, but you get, you know, a rake and you get a couple different feelers and um, the, uh, this one doesn't actually have any rakes, but the fancy kit does because they're a little bit more difficult to manufacture. You get a bunch of different rakes, um, like a wavy rake here and another wavy rake here. So these are a little bit more wavy style. These are a little bit more feely style. So, you know, you can have different styles. Um, but both have pretty thin, strong picks that you can go in and you can um, learn to feel the tumbler of your lock. And starting with a lock like this is really good because you can see what's happening. You know, as I, as I push um, the pins, you can see them move up and down. And then as you gain experience, um, you can then go to your hardware store and then either just ask them, hey, do you have any locks that don't have keys? And maybe they'll just give you some or look in your attic or basement and maybe you'll have some padlocks or locks that you've lost keys to. Or of course you can just buy one. Um, start with like the cheaper ones because they're usually a little easier to pick and then move your way up. And then um, one thing I really like is hacker spaces and maker spaces um, tend to have um, events called lock sport events where um, you know there's competitions where three people sit down and they have to pick three locks at the same time and who does it fastest yeah the girl scouts have events where they do a, they learn the it's learn the code and lock sport totally yeah. no it's super fun yeah. um and you know if you ever you know get locked out of your apartment or something or i got locked out of a cabinet once and it was like really handy i didn't have the keys to no. a, a filing cabinet that i owned i just you know didn't i lost the keys um, it's handy, but yeah, maker spaces and hacker spaces uh, and conventions have events that you can uh, then take part in, especially if you have a little bit of practice. So um, we have a couple of different um, parts so you can uh, join in this lock sport. So that's the, this is the basic kit. And then I'll sh I can show the fancy kit real fast. Let me just put this away. Um, yeah, the fancy kit is, it has a way nicer feel. Um, the metal is much stiffer. Um, so it'll last a lot longer, like it's springier because it's not stamped from, I think this is like stainless steel that's then um, blackened or like anodized. But you get a lot of different shapes like these, you know, unusual shapes as well as of course your standard feelers and uh, triangle tips. And then you get um, different wrenches, you get some flexible wrenches. And then this is a really great wrench. This is like nice and strong, but uh, very thin. So you can get into all sorts of locks. And for thicker locks, you can, you can use this uh, double-headed torsion wrench. So all, okay. all this lock sport you can handle. All right, next up, Lady Ada. This is the PIR key. So I actually put this in the store and then at the very last second decided, you know what, I want to upgrade these to 3.0. Um, so they're coming soon, they'll be in the store soon. This is a device that has CircuitPython running on it. It has only one input, an infrared remote receiver and an RGB LED. And the idea behind this is that running CircuitPython, um, you can take infrared remote input. Infrared remotes are everywhere. You don't need certifications. You don't have to pair them. They don't have passwords. But if you want to control a computer or a tablet or a phone, um, you can plug the PIR key in, um, program it to type in certain key commands or move the mouse in a certain way whenever it receives an IR um, command. You know, Chris Young does a lot of um, accessibility tech with IR, which what I thought was really inspiring, but I also see other people do projects where just it's easy to blast IR across the room or to a project that's far away. And this is very low cost. So it'll work with any computer, even if it doesn't have Bluetooth, even if it this doesn't have- This is neat. It's, it's like a universal okay. accessibility device. It's also Python. Yeah. And it just shows up as a drive. Just as a keyboard and a drive. The yeah. The drive has a code on it and the keyboard- So technically this is another one of our Circuit Python board. It is a Circuit Python board, and it yeah. was you know I, the IR key was originally not programmable because it has an AVR, and so it was like well you can't easily pre-program it, so I had to come with a remote. And you can only use it with a remote. With this, you can use it with any IR device. Yeah. Anything that's about 38 kilohertz, which is like pretty much everything, you read the raw pulses, you paste it into the example code that we provide, yeah. and then you can select what key commands you want to send. We have multimedia key support now. This um, is great for assistive technology because there's so many things that if you could just use a remote control and have these like macros already set up to type in or move a mouse or do something for you. This yeah. Is a good idea. So this is the, the PIR key. So the P stands for Python. Oh, um, that makes sense. Okay. So yeah, we got that in the store. It's basically like a little trinket, but it's just infrared in it. And then the star of the show tonight besides uh, Mike and you and our community. Mike is definitely Yeah, star. is uh, more blanky. This is ridiculous. So. Oh, yeah. 
We <laughs> wanted to get the ultimate high density LED strip. So this is 128 LEDs at four millimeter pitch. Um, it's, it's extremely high pitch. Um, is pretty much not going to get any higher pitch than this. Like basically, they are the LEDs are close or are placed, you know, back to back. I think it's actually even maybe a little bit less than four, That's maybe amazing. three millimeter. It's and, bright. Um, so we basically requested the factory that makes LED strips to, to manufacture this for us. And what's cool is that it's actually on an aluminum backed PCB. So the back is aluminum, so it acts as a heat sink because otherwise, like you actually can't drive as many LEDs. Like it's definitely you can't Here, have it put on under the, the overhead so we can blow out this camera. It's not too bright. <laughs> um, but it's completely smooth color. Like, you know, unless you're really close, um, you, you can't see the dot separation. Because, again, the, the, they're two millimeter LEDs and they're as close as possible. Um, they're dot stars. So, hold on, let me twist this around. So, they have like pretty good uh, persistence of vision. It's not, you know, the best persistence of vision, but it's pretty good. It's better than um, NeoPixels. Um, you can spin it around and have it like draw things out in the air. And uh, each one is 24 bit color, eight bits red, green, and blue. And you get 128 of these in a row on this uh, aluminum PCB. It's a little bit flexible, but I wouldn't flex it too much. Basically, you know, I, I can imagine if you're doing any sort of like costuming or um, environmental or architectural work where you just want to have like perfect adjustable LED gradients, um, this will definitely do the job for you. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, that was new products. So many things.